Okay guys, we're here at the beautiful Osaka Marine World in Durban, Zulu Natal. And uh, always a pleasure come visiting here with these spectacular fish tanks and species that will get any angler rattling with excitement. And also guys, it adds to that appreciation and respect that we all need as anglers to ensure a better tomorrow. Now the main reason we're here is there's a lot of talk, a lot of questions and maybe some confusion around the new MPAs that got announced recently. Do you guys hear that? That is some big shark pushing through the water here now. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's beautiful to hear the natural noises from the fish tanks. But yes, just back on the MPAs that's announced in South Africa now, who better to speak to than Bruce Mann himself from Ori Oceanic Research Institute, who worked on this project for over 12 years. And he's gonna shed some light on it for us and show us the areas, um, the zones, the actual zones, and the reasons why, and maybe answer a whole bunch of questions for you guys. So let's take a walk, but before I go there, I'm gonna go visit the shark tank and uh, just have a look at the beautiful specimens of shark they've got in the tank as well. All right, gents. Every shark angler gets rattling in front of this tank. Some beautiful specimens, huge sandies coming past, the really big reggies, and then of course, the, the almost famous brindle bass that swims around in this tank, who at one stage tried to swallow a 100 kilo blackfin shark. Yeah. Um, it's spectacular to watch the fish in the tanks in their almost natural environment. It's really, really beautiful. Hi guys, I'm standing here with Dr. Bruce Mann, Senior Scientist at the Oceanic Research Institute at Ushaka Marine World, Durban. Thank you Bruce for, for actually seeing us and answering all these questions that's running about the new MPAs. Um, we all feel that it's a positive thing and that uh, normally as anglers and public can sometimes do is run away with it a bit. So uh, essential that you just shed some light on it for us. Yeah. So I'm going to step out no and uh, hand over to you. Thank you. Great, thanks Andre. Hi everybody, yeah, um, my telephone has been running off the hook ever since these uh, marine protected areas were gazetted um, last month and so I thought it would be a, a useful opportunity to talk to you a little bit about what a marine protected area is. Essentially it's, it's like a game reserve, it's like a, an area of the coast that is protected by legislation where certain human activities are, are legislated or limited. So just like we have on land, we have protected areas um, throughout South Africa. In the same way, we need to have protected areas in the sea that protect um, our wonderful marine biodiversity. So if you look at the land, you go from the coastal plains and coastal forests up into the grasslands, up into the mountains of the Drakensberg. We need a network of protected areas to adequately protect the biodiversity of South Africa. So we've got Kruger National Park up here, we've got um, Mountain Zebra here, we've got Guru. So we've got different biomes or different areas that are protected. So in the same way, in the sea, we need to have protection all around the coastline because we've got a big warm a gullus current that sweeps down here and a cold Benguela current that comes up the west coast. So it's no good just having a big protected area up at Isamangalisu in the north here because this is clean tropical water. Down here we've got warm temperate, we've got mixing and here we've got cool temperate. So we need a network of protected areas. So if we look at historically what South Africa has had, we had 23 protected areas, marine protected areas around the South African coast, but that only made up 0.4% of South Africa's marine territory, which extends offshore 200 nautical miles. Okay, so that area, all the longs of sea, belongs to South Africa. It's our responsibility to look after it. And up until last year, only 0.4% of that was actually protected in any sort of marine reserve or protected area at sea. So based on lots and lots of work um, for the last 15 years or so, um, science, marine scientists around South Africa have um, tried to find out where the best places would be to protect our marine biodiversity. And they've come up with this plan um, that's shown down here and it shows you a 
network of 20 new marine protected areas that have recently been gazetted. Um, so those go right around South Africa, and a lot of them are offshore. So a lot of our new protected areas are, are far away from shore and have little influence on, on what you and I do um, as coastal users, but it, it affects the bigger um, shipping industry, the fishing industry offshore. So for today, um, because we live in KZN and a lot of our questions have been um, thrown at us about the KZN reserves, we're going to target that, that area. As fishermen, a lot of us think, well, why do we need marine protected areas? What do they do? Well, number one, if you close an area to fishing, if you stop people fishing in an area of good habitat, you immediately see a recovery in the number of fish. So the fish get more abundant than in fished areas. Number two, if you keep it closed for long enough, the fish get bigger. So you get bigger fish in these closed areas, which is really important. Okay, so you've got more fish, you've got bigger fish. Um, the next important thing is that those fish are much healthier than in the fished areas outside. Because they live to a ripe old age in the protected area, they can produce a lot more young. They produce more eggs, the eggs are more fertile, um, and those little individual fish are genetically healthier than the fish that are produced outside. So you've got more fish, you've got bigger fish, you've got healthier fish. And then the real selling point to us as anglers is that these protected areas act like reservoirs. Really, they like banks, where you invest your money, you protect your money in that, in that bank, and you live off the interest. In the same way, a marine protected area at sea protects the fish and allows them to recover in numbers and then they can seed the adjacent areas by what we call spillover. So it's either the eggs and larvae which are carried by the, the current out of the protected area and they settle outside, or it's actually the small fish that grow up, they find, well, there's lots of other fish here, let's move out of the area and find another area to settle. So they move out of the protected area, there's no fences in the sea, and they settle in the fished area. So us as, ben as fishermen can benefit from that spillover from protected areas. So they're really important tools um, that we can use not only to look after our marine biodiversity in all its wondrous forms, but particularly to look after our fish stocks. So, in order to understand the legislation that's just been gazetted on our marine protected areas, um, you'll see that a lot of, all of them have been zoned for different types of use. And the important thing for us is to understand what that zonation means. So there really are two general types of zonation that all of our marine protected areas are zoned into. Number one, we call them control zones, control use zones. And that's where they have been zoned to allow some kind of human use. So people can go to these areas and do whatever they do. Um, and and some, some areas extract resources, some areas um, do non-consumptive resource use, and other areas there are no take. So let's just explain that to you. So the controlled use zones in the legislation are divided into controlled zones, which is basically very similar to outside EPAs. You can, you can fish, you can harvest fish, you can take them home and eat them, as long as you've got your normal fishing permit and so on. Um, the other areas are zoned into what we call controlled pelagic zones. Controlled pelagic zones are where you're allowed to go out on your boat and you can fish for game fish. So you can fish for the pelagic fish that move through the area, um, but you're not allowed to fish on the bottom, so you can't take bottom fish. Um, and that's a useful way of protecting the resident species in the area, but you can continue to harvest the, the more pelagics that, that are moving through. So it doesn't matter if you harvest them before they're in the reserve, in the reserve, or once they've passed. Okay, so those are two important distinctions that you need to understand. The important thing is that even if it's a control zone, and even if you're allowed to fish there and harvest your fish, you still have to understand that that being a protected area prevents any mining taking place in that protected area. It prevents any pollution being put into that protected area, and it also often protects any types of industrial fishing, like big um, offshore long lining or trawling or that kind of thing. So even though you're allowed to fish there, there are still regulations in place that are protecting the area as a whole. Then we move into the more fully protected zones where 
basically we have two types. The first one we have is, is what we call a restricted zone and that is where no consumptive utilization is allowed. So you're not allowed to fish or spear fish in those zones and take fish out. All right? But in, in a lot of our restricted zones you can still go into those areas and you can um, do non-consumptive type of activity. So you can scuba dive, you can snorkel, you can sail, you can take your surfboard. So there are activities that are allowed to take place in those zones but there's no extractive use of the, the resources. And then one step up on that is what we call a no-take sanctuary zone or a, a wilderness area. And that in fact is a, a no-go, no-take zone. So there, unless you've got a special permit, you're actually not allowed into, into those areas. And those are very special areas to try and protect them with no, no kind of impact from human activities at all. Um, and there are very few of those, but we do have some. Um, and I'll show you up in Simangali, so where there are some of those. Basically, a lot of my questions that I'm getting that people are not understanding is the specific zoning around the different MPAs. So we're going to start up in the north of KwaZulu Natal with the Ismangaliso Wetland Park, which is now South Africa's biggest marine protected area, and it is also South Africa's first World Heritage Site. Okay, so you guys know areas like St. Lucia, Cape Vidal, and Sudwana and Cozy Bay are very popular um, tourist destination areas. So let's see how they've zoned this MPA. Historically, this MPA only used to extend out as far as um, Cape Vidal, um, all the way up to the border with Mozambique, but it only extended three nautical miles out to sea. So it was a narrow belt along the coastline. So with the, the new proclamations, it's been extended extended a lot further offshore. The funny lines are because that's a line of latitude and that's a line of longitude which makes it easier to see when you're on a, on a vessel if you're in or out. The zonation for Smangaliso is simple. It's been divided into offshore zonation or boat based activities and inshore zonation. Okay, so let's start with the, inshore, the offshore because that's simpler. This is what activities you're allowed to do from a vessel, any vessel, whether it's a, a fishing ski or a ski boat or a jet ski, it's the same. All right, it stayed pretty much as you guys will remember. Uh, basically, in the south, there's a um, this is Mangalisa offshore controlled pelagic zone in the south and the same up in the north. So basically from Sudwana all the way up to Dog Point, there is pelagic game fishing allowed. Boat based and the same with spear fishing. You can spear fish for pelagic. Exactly the same from Cape Bible all the way up to Levin Point and all the way down to Cape St. Lucia at the lighthouse there. You can harvest pelagic species but no reef fish species. The dis difference is that offshore now there's a no take restricted zone um, which is a long way offshore. This is to try and um, stop uh, long liners, pelagic long liners coming in. So there's, a, there's an offshore area and then from Dog Point all the way up to the border with Mozambique is now closed. There used to be a little area open at Banga Neck, just a couple of k's up to um, 13 north that was open. That's now all been closed. So that whole area is now no, a no-take zone. Um, in the middle, remember I told you about sanctuaries, this is the Ismangaliso wilderness zone or sanctuary zone where no, no activities may take place. So there's no diving or fishing allowed in, in the sanctuary between Levin Point and all the way up to Red, Red Cliffs there. So it's very simple. Um, pelagic game fishing as you've always done and no fishing in the sanctuary area and no fishing in the restricted areas offshore and up in the north. Um, that's basically what the zonation means. And small area around Sudwana Bay, so from two mile reef all the way up to nine mile, has been closed as a restricted area. Uh, I think this is because of um, a lot of user conflict, lots of divers, over 100,000 dives take place in this area a year. So the idea here is to um, stop fishing and spear fishing on the, the shallow reefs on the inshore here and allow diving and snorkeling to take place um, and no fishing to take place in that, in that area. 
Now we're going to move to the intro zone and what you're allowed to do from the beach itself. Okay, so this is shore based activities. Here the zonation is a little bit more complicated, um, but it's, it's pretty easy to get your head around. Basically, what we've got is three types of zones in the inshore. We've got controlled zones where you're allowed to fish and harvest as, as we have been. You've got restricted zones which allow um, no, no fishing, so they no take areas. And then we've got a new area which is called a catch and release area where only catch and release fishing is allowed. So you're not allowed to take and kill your fish. You can fish there, but you've got to fish with a barbless hook and release your fish so you can't take them home. So I'm going to start up in the north and, and work our way south of the park. So you'll see the whole coastline is zoned um, for different activities. And this is to try and protect the, the inshore fish species. So a lot of you will know the species that are found up here. Speckled snapper, cave bass, rock salmon, all those kind of species. Very, very resident. They live in small cups of reef. So that's what we're trying to achieve with, with this kind of protection. Also protecting um, some of the invertebrates, so um, black mussels, oysters, that kind of thing that are found on the rocks. So as we work from the border, you'll see that there's a no-take zone from the border all the way around down to Cozy Mouth. Cozy Mouth, 500 meters either side, you're allowed to fish. So there's a fishing, a, a controlled area that you can go and fish in. And then again, immediately south of that, um, all the way down to Beacon 13 is a no-take zone. Um, and then you've got Bunga, Bunga Neck control zone. So if you come and stay in accommodation at Bunga Neck, you've got six kilometers of coastline that you're allowed to fish in. So that's a control zone. So it's, it's making it accessible to areas where there are access roads, people can still fish here. Going south, this is the old um, Dog Point Preserve, so from Bottler Point, just south, south of the cottage, um, all the way down to Dog Point is still going to be a no-take zone. Then, all the way from um, Dog Point, all the way down here is all control zone. So all this area is open to fishing. Um, there's a small no-take zone, a new one, that is just south of Lala Neck. It's just three kilometers of coastline south of the point at Lala Neck. Uh, that protects some nice inshore reef habitat in that area and it's far away from where people normally go so it's not going to really impact us a lot. The second area is south of Mabibi um, and runs down to, to, to Nine Mile so it's a stretch of coastline here with good reef habitat um, but those people who are staying at Mabibi or Tonga Lodge there's still um, three or four k's south of Mabibi camp that you can you can walk down and, and fish in so it's not going to impact the holiday makers a lot. Then on the north and south of Sudwana, control zone. So fishing is allowed north and south of, of Sudwana for quite a long distance. It's at least 5k is north and south. In fact, it's 10k is north and south of Sudwana. Then you come down to those of you who know it, Adlam's Rocks. Um, and from Adlam's all the way down to the boundary of the sanctuary is now going to be a catch and release zone. This is far, this is a long walk. It's 10 k's from Sedona. We're not allowed to drive anymore on the beach. So it's for those avid anglers um, who really enjoy getting out. Sometimes they're using these um, fat wheel bikes to, to ride down. You can come down and fish here, um, but you're not allowed to take the fish back with you. You can catch fish and release them. And then you go into the sanctuary area here between Red Sands and Levin Point. This is still a no-take zone. It has been since 1979, um, and it's still closed to any form of, of fishing, both on the shore and offshore. Now we're moving south of Levin Point. You'll see all the way um, down to this area here, um, which is about 5 k's north of Bible. Um, has been called a catch and release zone. So from 5 k's um, north of Bible, for those of you who know it's Dunn's, Dunn's Cottage, there used to be a cottage here. Um, this area, past vegetation, all the way up to 11 point, is now a catch and release zone. So again, you can go up there, walk up there, or, or ride up on, on bikes, um, fish in this area, but you're not allowed to bring the fish home with you. Um, the area north and south of Bible itself is still a control zone. So those guys who go for the the July holidays to go and catch shad, you'll still be allowed to do that. So this is open for fishing in that area. 
And then immediately south of Bible, if you walk down to about the lighthouse, just south of the lighthouse, there's a small catch and release zone. Um, and then you've got another restricted zone, or no take zone, um, down on the south edges, sort of quite a long way south of Bible that there's no fishing allowed. Um, and then on either side of Mission Rocks, for those of you who have been there, you've got um, catch and release zones, and then working, walking further north, if you go past Bats Cave in the north, you'll go into that no take zone. So that's how that is zoned. South of First Rocks is all open, this is control zone all the way down um, past Mapelan. And if you walk south of Mapelan, uh, it's about four or five k south of Mapelan, you'll get to railway ledges. Um, and that area is closed as a little no take zone. It's only about three or four k's. Um, by the time you get to the Jolly Rabino, you're back into a control zone. So if you drive to Cape St. Lucia, you can fish up past the Jolly Rabino up, up until the boundary of that no take zone. So these areas will be demarcated with, um, I'm sure, with notice boards on the beach. Um, so if you walk up the beach, you'll be able to see where areas that you can fish and where you can't fish. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is the Utugela MPA, um, which runs basically from just north of Tinley Manor all the way up to the Mlala's mouth at Timtanzini. So it's a big area um, and extends a long way offshore. We'll talk first about the offshore area, so the boat-based activities, and then the inshore areas um, in terms of zonation. So offshore, it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly simple. Um, basically, the idea was to try and protect from the coast to the canyon. So this is a big no-take area, no fishing area allowed from the Tugela River going right out um, to the, the canyon and the, end, the sort of edge of the continental shelf, which is very wide in this area. It goes offshore about 30 or 40 k. so it's a, it's a big area, um, and that is all no fishing, so no fishing um, by boat in this restricted zone. Then on either side of it, you've got control zones. So the Tugela control zones, you're allowed to fish, both um, pelagic fish and um, bottom fish. A lot of commercial fishermen fishing in this area, you're still allowed to, to fish. Um, basically, the one other thing to point out is this little area up here, which is up on the half points, which is in the half points, is now a controlled pelagic zone. So this is to try and protect because it's a very, very rich reef area that comes up off, off the bottom um, to try and collect, to protect the resident reef fish in that area, but you're still allowed to go and catch your cooter and your pelagics that, that are found in that area. This area here is basically going to eventually over time become part of this no-take area. But um, because it was very important to the commercial fishermen, um, they catch a lot of trawl soldiers in this area, um, it was felt that they needed to, to fish this area still, so it was a compromise made. Um, and at the end of the, the next um, long-term run, which is in seven years' time, that area will become a, a restricted area. So that's how the zonation in Tugela works in terms of offshore post-base activity. Okay, while we're still on boat-based activities, just look at this area of the no-tank sanctuary. It comes right into Siola Point on the south um, and a couple of k's north of Tugela Mouth there. So that is a no-tank sanctuary area for any boat-based activity. So that means that this area that used to be very popular um, for catching Gary um, during the winter months is now a no-take area. But really that's so important, it's one of the most important Garrick spawning grounds that we know, and that means that at least offshore it's been getting some protection. In terms of the zonation inshore or together, it's really very simple. Most of it stays um, controlled use zone, so you're still um, allowed to fish along much of the coastline of the Tugela MPA. The only areas that are now going to be closed is a, a really difficult area to access that's basically south of the Matikulu Bunyoni river mouth there, um, down to about five or six kilometers north of the Tugela mouth. So it's an area, it's a sandy beach area, um, it's very difficult to access, there's no roads going in here, and it's too far really to walk north or, or, or south of um, the beach access in the muddy pool. So it's an area of difficult access that's now closed. And then there's a short stretch 
Ram, south of the Mboti River mouth. As some of you might know Jex Estates, which is over there. Um, this is a couple of k's south of that, and it's an area that's closed um, for about three or four k's down towards um, north of the Tindley Manor ski boat launch site. Um, is where there's a small section of coastline, very good reef habitat, lots of rock, rocky area that is now close to fishing um, in the together in here. So it's really just that area and that area that affects shore anchors. The rest is still open as it was before. Now we've moved further down south of south of Durban and we had the Amkamas um, area, which is the Alawal Shoal Marine Protected Area. Um, those of you who remember, it used to run basically from the Amkamas um, south bank down there all the way down to the Imzamai River just south of Rocky Bay here. Okay, so it's extended, um, sorry, down to Imzamai here. Um, so basically the, the Alawal Shoal area used to only be 7 k's offshore which included the crown area of the shoal itself. It's now extended a lot further offshore. Um, and it's also extended um, up north to the Yelovo River, south of the Yelovo River mouth. So again, we'll split the zonation into offshore first, boat-based activities, and then inshore. So offshore, again, quite simple, and we've tried to use a similar design um, where we have a controlled use zone um, in the south, so basically going from Scottborough all the way down to south of Rocky Bay is still controlled use, so you can fish uh, both bottoms and pelagics in this area. Commercials will be able to continue to fish. And again in the north, um, the same from the Ghani River, which is just north of Amkamas, all the way up to Lobo is a controlled use zone. So again, bottom fishing and pelagic fishing. In the middle, of the, of the MPA, basically going from the Ngari River mouth all the way down to Scottborough Point. Um, this is going to be now a controlled pelagic zone for boat based activities. So, no reef fishing, bottom fishing, no bottom spear fishing, only pelagic fish. So, the migratory fish, the kuta, the snook, the garrick, those kind of species you can continue to harvest in there. Offshore, so in the deep water, this is about the 200 meter depth contour there. So it's very deep water. We've got an offshore no-take zone. All right, that's to try and protect some of the, the shelf and the important deep water species. It's not going to have a lot of impact on us as fishermen. Um, <clears throat> inside this area here, there are two important areas that you need to be aware of. The crown area of Alawal Shoal itself still is a no-take area. But, um, called the restricted zone so scuba diving will continue to be allowed to take place and the same with the wreck of the produce there. Those are little no-take areas as they have been in the past. The only new area is this little block which is just north of the Amkamas mouth here. It's a dirty area, often gets a lot of dirty water that, that comes um, flowing northwards from Amkamas but there's some flat reef here and it's an important spawning ground for cod. So this little area here has been um, closed off to fishing. It's a little rock there. So that's basically um, how the offshore of Ella Shoal has been zoned. The important thing for anglers in this part of the world is that this area is called the Alova Banks. And historically, we had a lot of our um, very important land for species, particularly 74, but also Geobek, Dusky Cobb, or Dava Salmon, we call them in the town, um, and even Red Steambrus, um, spawning in this area. So during the winter months, particularly August, September, October, we get large shoals of those fish um, aggregating here to spawn. That hasn't happened for, for many years, in fact, since the 1960s, because we fished out those stocks. So this area here will be have a seasonal closure. So from 1st of August to the end of August, September, October, end of October, there'll be no bottom fishing allowed in this northern area. And that's to try and allow those uh, important reef fish species that aggregate at that time of year a chance to spawn.
So that's the offshore for Hello World. So in terms of the inshore area of the Hello World Shoal MPA, most of it remains controlled zones, so fishing is still allowed from the, from the shore. There are two small areas that have been closed to fishing. Basically it runs from the Masongwana just north of the Shongwana, um, if those of you who know it, Woodenham Buddha, High Rocks. Um, so just on the sort of southern point of those High Rocks, down to a point on Green Point, um, is closed to fishing. So this is the Clansville uh, beach area. So it's literally about three kilometers of, of area that's closed. So angling will still be allowed on the on the southwestern face of Greenpoint, which is the most important area where most of the guys go and catch their shad and what have you at Greenpoint. You're still allowed to fish, but you're not allowed to fish on the northern side of Greenpoint up to Mashongwana. So that's a small area that's closed. The only other area is about 1k of ledge just south of the Rocky Bay Caravan Park um, and down to the Mzumai River. Yeah, so it's a very short session of nice rocky ledge that has been closed to try and protect some of the invertebrate fauna that live in that area. But those are the only areas of the Alawal Shoal MPA that are actually going to impact on shore anglers itself. Okay, so the fourth marine protected area for the KwaZulu Natal coastline is what's been called the Protea Banks MPA. So that's based down in the, the lower south coast of, of KZN. Um, those of you will know Shelly Beach is the main launch site in the area. Now this is primarily an offshore protected area, so it, it doesn't impact shore anglers at all, um, but it does impact boat-based boat -based fishing. The way this EPA has been zoned is it basically starts from the 40 meter depth contour. That's that line there running from um, AF. Um, so you're allowed to undertake any boat-based activities as you have done in the past, shallower than 40 meters, but if you go out deeper than 40 meters, then you're into the MPA, and then it's been zoned for different types of use. The most important thing I think that people will be asking about is the Protea banks themselves. This is where the Protea banks are situated in this area, and basically what it's, what's happened here is it's been blocked into a controlled pelagic zone. So it's called the Protea Controlled Pelagic Zone and again no reef fishing allowed in here, no bottom fishing but you will be allowed to fish for game fish. Similarly to the north um, and to the south are control zones. So this is all um, same as it has been. You can continue to fish this whole area both bottom fish and, and game fish as you have done before. That's because there are quite a lot of fishermen, charter boat fishermen and commercials who fish on the reef fish in this area. Then the important thing then going offshore into deep water is that this is extending quite a long way offshore, a no-take restricted zone offshore. So no fishing um, in deep water. This is the 200 meter deep contour here. So basically you're looking at very deep water offshore. And the idea here is to try and protect some of the canyons that incise the continental shelf and have very unique and rich fauna on them. And then this strip, basically coming down here, it's just about 5 k's wide. It's a little no-take zone that's trying to protect a representative sample of the offshore reefs here and it links in with the old Trafalgar Marine Reserve which runs from just south of the Marina Beach Hotel at Centre Rocks there down to just south of um, Benjati River here at Palm Beach there's a beacon here. So you're still allowed to fish along the shore here but um, in the inshore area of Trafalgar here, out, of, out to one nautical mile, um, it's a pelagic fishing area, so no bottom fishing. And then after one nautical mile in the deep, it becomes a no-take fishing area. So that little strip links in as a no-take fishing area. So that's basically Protea, so it's quite a simply zone in here. And the idea here is to try and protect the rich assemblage of, of reef fish um, and other species, the sharks and what have you, that aggregate on the Protea banks um, in this area. Okay, an important um, point about these protected areas is that in all cases, uh, Protea, Alawashol, Utugela, 
and Ismangali, sir. They are closed to fishing at night. So after dusk in the evening and up until dawn in the morning, there's no fishing allowed offshore on boat-based activities. And really this is to try and protect some of the important species that have been heavily overfished that, that spawn or aggregate at night, particularly things like Hjelbeck um, and dusky common in our waters. So that, that is the, the main reason for that closure of night fishing in these areas. Okay guys, I think, you know, these, these MPAs that have been um, declared are a big change for, for some of us, but they really are absolutely essential. If we're going to look after our fish stocks um, for future generations, for our kids to go and enjoy, we actually need these protected areas. Re they're really, really important. Um, so, and yeah, every, on every tip of everybody's tongue is how on earth do we manage them? These are huge tracts of ocean. How are we going to look after it? And I think really it's up to each one of us. We've got to buy into this idea and support them ourselves. If we can support them and we then can be the eyes and the ears on the water to, to help police these areas and make them work. Otherwise they just become paper parks, something that's written in legislation that nobody's going to obey. But if they work well, um, I've been working in protected areas for 30 years now and I've seen um, all the way from Titsikama, Duhup, um, Ponderland, Ismangaliso, all of these protected areas. If we can enforce no take, they are incredible how nature can look after herself if we give her a chance. So please guys, um, really this is something that as, as angling bodies in South Africa we need to take on and embrace and, and, and make it work for, for the good of ourselves. Well Bruce, I think that really sums it up and thank you for a thorough in-depth explanation of what has happened. And guys, I think Bruce, Bruce has hit it on the head. It's up to us as individual anglers out there to be responsible and think of the future. And Bruce, if I'm right, um, it's not just for our future generations. We have seen the impact of certain areas in the last 10 years, where certain closed areas, the spillover of the fish up there, we're already seeing them in size. We can see over the 15 years we filmed and fished in South Africa, and with you guys on the Ori Tagging Projects, the direct result of these initiatives. So thank you for what you guys are doing. You're doing a great job. Um, a lot of anglers just go up, they want to catch stuff and they yeah. forget about the, the footprint what, that they leave on the beach. So guys, that's all you need to leave is footprints. And like Dean Pretoria has also said, is limit your catch, don't catch your limit. We thank you very much for your time. I know you're a busy man. And uh, okay. thank you for the great explanation. I hope that answers everything for everybody. Thanks, Bruce.